Okay. Yo, what's up, guys? This is Terrell here from Terrell Game Vlogs here to bring you my teen romantic comedy snafu season two, episode two review. Man, there's a lot of ooze in there. Anyways, that's not the point. Uh, so let's talk about the episode in its entirety. This was interesting. I actually have kind of, I've I've seen this episode as early as like this morning, and it's like almost four, probably about four o'clock, maybe five o'clock in the morning right now, and I'm still having problems because I wanted to kind of decipher it and see where because the, there's, a, there's a lot of layers to this episode and I don't want as I said I'm not going to like go ahead and review every scene because not every scene is important certain scenes have certain levels of importance to them and I'll talk about them as I talk about them but like the meat of it is the end of it which is the Tobey stuff the confession everyone's reactions to to the confession and then Hina stuff at the very end and pretty much Ikigaya's last line but some of the moments I do like, I think like all the group moments they've been doing for these last two episodes have been cute as fuck. Uh, the one from the the whole Yuki Nostra defending him thing, I thought that was cute. At the beginning of this episode where he, where you can kind of tell that he guys changed to an extent. Because he's actually offering his hand out to like help Yui up. And he kind of, he kind of backpedaled a little bit but she like caught him before she did it. So she's still kind of, so you can tell Yui's effect is working. Uh, the other thing I liked was them sharing the food scene. That is adorable. That is fucking adorable. <laughs> and it sucks because when they finally get to the romance side of this of the series, I'm gonna, you're not gonna, you can't see those scenes anymore, which sucks. <laughs> but we have a while before that because the, what would happen, have to, what what would have to happen first is that Yuki Nosha, you and Hiki Guy are gonna deal with their personal issues before. We even throw in the concept of love, even though they're throwing in a lot of the romance hints anyway. But, getting into the meat and potatoes of this, which was the confession, and pretty much everyone's thoughts on the confession, and kind of the build-up to the confession, because we have the whole thing with Yumiko and Hayama and even Hina herself telling Hikigaya different things, but it all really leading up to the same thing. No one wants their group to change. And if Tobey asks Hina out, no matter which way it goes, it's not going to stay the same. Because if they do go out, then you change the whole dynamic of the group. And if they don't go out, then there's this awkwardness that settles around. And it becomes really weird, especially because we find out in the episode that Hina didn't... Hina personally has some issues. Hina emotionally is not prepared to be in a relationship. And it's... Primarily because, and this this was kind of hinted in season one too, Hayama's like that little group with Hayama, Tobey, what's her name, Yumiko, fucking Kina, everybody. That is a shell-ass friendship. That is like the worst representation of friends, period. Because it's that type of friendship in which everyone's aware that their friendship is so shallow that something as easy as them dating would break it. That's they they're aware and they know and also the fact that Hayama knew that Hina uh, wasn't emotionally ready to be dating anyone because Hina is blatantly aware of that uh, she is a walking contradiction but she still enjoys the life that she's being able to lead because of being a walking contradiction and in turn that's why she said at the end of the episode she hates herself. She hates herself because she understands what her problem is. She understands that what she's doing is not the right way to handle things. And at the same time, she has no fucks about changing it currently because she's happy with the way things are, even though the way things are are broken. It's like, it's like watching a cracked glass roll around. That's what their friendship is. Their friendship is just, it's just a fucking cracked glass rolling around. You're just kind of waiting for it to snap. And she sees the cracks, she sees the problem, she just doesn't want to address it. Also, I believe that her little hint that she likes Hikigai was true. Why? I think she's aware that Hikigai has like no interest in her whatsoever. But it's kind of obvious Hina likes Hikigai. And people say, well, I, because some people thought that was literally a joke. Like, no, that wasn't a joke. Usually when a girl, a girl doesn't casually say that shit to you. And Hina's not one of them girls to do that. Hina probably legitimately likes Hikigai, and Hikigai just shot her down. That's what... Whether Hiki Guy is aware of all that, I don't know, and he probably is. Which kind of gets into the issue of how that confession was handled and how Hiki Guy's way to handle things was handled. Uh, Hiki Guy handled that the best way he knew how to, 
but his reasoning was completely flawed from the get-go. Because for one, even though Hickey Guy has done this before, throw himself under the bus for the sake of others, he always did it still following his own ideals. Versus this time where it didn't make any fucking sense to do this. If you notice back in the first season when he did the shit with Sagamine, he didn't even have to say anything. He could have let that shit go. And he could have just let it carry out the, the casual bullshit shoujo type way. And he still opened his mouth and said some shit. Versus here, where literally it's the exact opposite. He could have shut his mouth and let that shit just crash and burn. He could have let them carry out that plan and let Tobey ask her out, get rejected, and completely destroy that friendship. That's what he. That's what. That's what season one ha Hachiman would have done. What he, which is why he says he ends up being the biggest liar. Because even though he goes around trying to justify it, just justify why he did it the way he did it, he had no reason to do it that way. Especially when you realize that, when you notice that, that group has done nothing for Hachiman in any way, shape, or form. Hell, it doesn't even do anything for Yui in any shape or form. And it's like, and that's why Yui and Yuki Noshita had their respective reactions. It's like, who the fuck wants to see someone that they care about get hurt for the sake of people that they don't even give a shit about? You could tell that from the first episode that Yuki Noshita had like no fucks to give about Tobei and shit. She did it because it was a request, and she had no problem having any faith in, she had no problem having faith in Higigaya's way of handling it. But remember, they didn't see the Sagamine situation, so they don't know about the details of that. They just know that Sagamine got tr talked the fuck down, and Hickey Guy was such a jerk about it. That's all they know about that. But that's that, that's and, and that seems to be the overwhelming response is that what Hickey Guy did, the reason why the girls are mad at him, or at least did not approve at all, is because it's like. They care about Hickey Guy, which is kind of the overrunning theme for these two episodes, is that Yuki Noshita liked Hickey Guy more than she had in the first season. That's taught, that's been shown through her actions towards Hickey Guy, for the fact that she's nowhere near as dickish to Hickey Guy. And then this one, where she even says, I don't know how to put it, I don't know how to explain it why, but I really hate the way you do things. Wonder why? Because she doesn't recognize that her feeling, that she has feelings for Hickey Guy. Now, how deep those feelings are, we don't know. But she's not aware of her feelings fully. And also, and I've seen this theory be th thrown around, which makes a lot of sense to me personally. The admiration that Hikigaya had for Yuki Noshita and the bullshit pedestal that he put her on in the first season. I feel like it was the reverse here. I feel like Yuki Noshita just realized that Hikigaya is also a human and also makes fucking mistakes and, say, and does things that are contradictory to himself. Which is exactly what he did. For someone who loathes these shallow, superficial relationships, you just threw yourself under the bus to protect one. And also, with a group of people you don't even fucking care about. At all. You know, the group of people who can... None of these characters get your name right. Which I think that, that might be the whole point. It's like, you threw yourself under the bus for niggas who don't even get your name right. And for one of these people who you actively don't like. If you notice, Hickey Guy has also been a lot more expressive with his emotions. He guy kind of kept that same neutral stance. He's call, he called characters idiots like four times in this episode. And his relationship with Hayama is obvious now that they do not like each other. Hayama does not like Hickey Guy, doesn't like the way Hickey Guy handles things. And, and fucking Hickey Guy damn sure doesn't like Hayama with his superficial ass. Which is why the scene, which is why he calls himself the bigger, biggest liar at the end. Because you threw yourself under the bus to protect a relationship that, for one, are full of people that don't give a fuck about you. Two, for people who have the, have the thing that you hate. You hate superficiality. So why would you throw yourself under the bus to protect a superficial relationship? And then on top of that, and then, uh, and then the other theory that's throwing around is that there may, the other reason he may have done it was also because I think a lot of people think that he is aware, and I think he is aware of some of the feelings that Yui might have for him and I don't and I think he's actively trying to get away from that like before I don't think he was fully aware of what was going on with him and Yui I feel like he's aware that Yui or Yuki Nosha may have feelings for him and he doesn't know how to process that or at this point he's just afraid of being hurt and he just refuses to acknowledge that. So he, I think at some point, because it's mentioned, it, it's foreshadowed from the first season, where Harutsuka Sensei tells him at the end of the arc, he's like, listen, 
even though you're not physically hurt by your actions, other people are. And then Yui says it again here. It's like, how are you so smart? How are you so analytical and smart, but so but you can't see something so simple? That your actions may not hurt you, but they hurt the people who care about you. Which is what happened. And the, the, the theory is that I think he's aware that it does that. And I think he's trying to push them away, either intentionally or subconsciously. But I think he's aware enough to realize that that was the problem. That's why he got mad at himself during that scene, during the end of that scene, going into the next scene. But, I mean, the episode was good. It's just, it's, it's, it was heavy. It was really heavy, and I didn't expect it to be that heavy in the second episode. I am very interested, especially because the title of the next episode is called Yuki Noshita, Yuki no Yuki Noshita, uh, Quietly Makes Her Decision. Um... What that's referring to, I don't know, but hopefully we'll get some development, whether it explains whether that means we're going to address the car situation. Because I feel like that still needs to be addressed with the Sable and her inadvertently hitting Hikigai with the car and shit. Like, that's not like a huge thing, but I feel like it needs to be addressed at the same time. Also, we might need to get some backstory for why her personality towards Hikigai changed at this point. Because remember, at the end of episode 13... Even though 13 or 12, whichever one you want to count, uh, her attitude towards Hiki Guy was still that stereotypical sharp tongue kind of dickish response. Whereas now she's a lot softer, she's a lot calmer with Hiki Guy. I mean, to the point now where she'll go out of her way to defend him. Or maybe it's just because you can know she hasn't recognized her feelings fully. I'm not 100% sure. But the moral of this episode is, is if anything, is that. When you're in relationships like that, these shallow, hollow-ass relationships, people end up changing themselves to protect something that really wasn't worth protecting in the first place. And he guy uh, being a hypocrite, because, you know, as much as he hates that, he still went out of his way to protect it. Now, for the reason, that kind of is thrown up in the air. But the point is this. In society, when we get to this point where you're fucking protecting things that... When, you have, when you've completely changed yourself as a person... You grow to hate yourself, which is why it's not healthy. The whole point is, you should be in relationships that allow you to be who you are. If you have to hide or change a certain aspect of yourself to fit a mold, and you do that for a long experience of time, you either come to dislike yourself as a person, or you forget who you really are. And it, it's just fucking it's rough, man. But I'm pretty sure that we're going to cover a lot of this hickey guy, contradictory hypocrisy bullshit. And see if you, where Yuki Noshita's feelings lie. Because Yui's pretty much been validated since the first season. There's not too much you really have to cover with Yui. Because Yui's a relatively open book anyway. Because her role isn't to be the one who has all the emotional change. That's Yuki Noshita and Hikigaya's issues. Which is why we went through a lot of Yuki Noshita stuff at the end of the first season. And we're going through our respective Hikigaya stuff here in the second season. But uh, that's my general thoughts and opinions of the episode. Please leave yours in the comment section below. This has been the Vlogs of the Game for your boy Terrell. And I will catch you guys later. Peace.